Hi there, welcome to RS Design Spark, and today we're going to be talking about emergency stops with Steve Schiller. Hi, Steve, do you want to say hello to Design Spark? Hello, Greg. Hello, Design Spark. Um, my name is Steve Schiller. I am the IDEC Business Unit Manager for EMEA. Um, I've been with IDEC for 25 years, which has been an exciting time to say the least. Had uh, given me plenty of opportunity to travel the world, visit IDEC USA, of course visit IDEC head office in Japan, um, but also plenty of opportunities to meet customers and applications across Europe, so uh, very good. Yeah, great. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. I'm going to start, really, this, this might seem like a silly question, um, but I, I always like to start with something, you know, really in the essence of what we're talking about. So what is the purpose of an emergency stop? A very good question and, and you know, it is important. Effectively, an emergency stop is a manually actuated device uh, which is intended to stop any dangerous motion or hazards on a machine. Uh, the purpose of the stop, because it's safety critical, uh, has to be important that it's not going to fail. It always has to be in a safe state and should not be used uh, as a general on-off button. It should be used in emergencies only. And realistically, on any machine or application, it should be the, um, let's say, the, the last possible measure to limit that hazard. Right. So simply right. put, it's a, it's a panic button for uh, anything to stop accidents and, and incidents. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point you make about it, it shouldn't be used as just a basic on off switch. I have seen that over the course of my uh, time within the industry, yeah, it, it's, it is bad practice. So, okay, we're not using it as an on-off button. Tell me more about the related standards with emergency stops. I guess they have to meet certain standards, right? Yeah, for sure. There's plenty, actually, that somehow touch or discuss where an e-stop should and shouldn't be used and how it should be interfaced. Um, the first one, I think, is the important one, is, is 13, uh, ISO 13850. Uh, within ISO 13850, it kind of frames the, the basic functions in an, of an emergency stop and what it should do, such as the safe uh, uh, contact disconnect, if you like, direct opening contact. Um, it talks about the color coding. Uh, obviously, red is what we always see. But there are situations where the emergency stop button perhaps should be a different type of color or an illuminated type. So yeah, there's lots mm -hmm. of standards from that side. Uh, also, ISO 13849-1. Uh, this is more about the, uh, let's say, the interface of the emergency stop into the safety control system of the customer's machine or the uh, OEM's design. Uh, and here it talks about what the emergency stop does and the need of that to meet performance level C or PLC, uh, SIL 1. Um, and the importance of the customer or the designer of the machine to carry out their risk assessments to ensure that the safety control philosophy does meet that standard. Uh, to achieve this, uh, there's a, a system, a system library uh, where we talk about, uh, let's say, mean time between failures or mean time to failure. Uh, and typically for an IDEC ESOP, we're talking about a, a B10D value of 100,000. The final uh, standard which we should consider here is IEC 60947-5-1, uh, where we talk about um, so the, the key functions like direct opening contact, the safety lock mechanism, um, the way in which the stop should be reset. So it shouldn't just be a push to actuate and a push to reset like a push button could be. There has to be a specific twist to reset or pull to reset. And all this is detailed, I say, in, in, in within the standards that relate to e-stops. Yeah, and I guess obviously um, with emergency stop, uh, the word that you used previously was panic. So that has me, you know, thinking where where we need to use that emergency stop. Sometimes, you know, in the the height of the the incident occurring, um, perhaps excessive force will be applied. So. You know, can e-stops be damaged easily with excessive force? Um, it's an interesting question, and it's one that we we certainly take into consideration. The simple answer to the question is yes. Um, of course, within the IAC standard, there is a, an element of um, 
impact resistance that an e-stop should should meet. Uh, however, it has been known in industry that an emergency stop has been struck hard and maybe the contacts have been disconnected and therefore the normally closed contacts don't open and the hazardous part of the machine continues to run. Uh, so yes, it, it can happen. Uh, one of the products that I developed some years ago was what we call the third generation e-stop. And here we actually use uh, a reverse energy structure within the contact mechanism. Um, so that in the event either the operator was to become damaged or the contact block was to become disconnected, those normally, contact, normally closed contacts would go to an open state and therefore fail to safe. Um, so in real terms, IDEC developed this to go beyond the international standards. Uh, and all of our latest e-stop uh, products use this safe break action or reverse energy structure in order to ensure, in the event of a contact removal or a damage to the actual e-stop operator, the e-stop will fail to a safe state and the hazards will, can't occur. Yeah, um, interesting to hear about what you were saying there with the um, the, the fail-safe action. Yeah, it, it, it does crop up quite a lot, obviously, within the, the industry. So um, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that the you know the safe break action feature you have on on your e stops. I just wonder if there's anything more you want to add to that before we move on. Um, well, I think the, so. The important for us is it's a differentiator for the IDEC product range. Um, many of our uh, many of the products you'll see in the marketplace um, meet the international standards. Of course, they do. Um, but for us, this safe break action, uh, ensuring that there is. Uh, appropriate interfacing to the control system does position IDEC in a, in a very strong front for the design of eStop. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of um, installation integration, I think you touched a, a bit about it on, on the standards, obviously, but what is it you can share with the viewers about, you know, if there are any installation integration features that you need to call out when fitting an emergency stop? Okay, interesting question. Uh, often overlooked, actually. Of course, you can never have too many emergency stops. The reality is they're there for a purpose, and that purpose is to keep the operators safe in the uh, unfortunate situation where there could be a hazard that's present. So when mounting the emergency stop, if it's a robot cell, for example, certainly on the entry and exit to a cell or a working area, an emergency yeah. stop, uh, an area where the user of a machine has some kind of manual intervention, so that if something were to go wrong, they can reach to an emergency stop. Um, things even where hold to run functions. So if you are considering a pendant or a robot cobot controller, there should always be an emergency stop on that hold to run function, so that if they are walking around the robot or cobot with a, a trailing lead of a pendant, then the emergency stop should be close to hand. Um, and fundamentally, the general, let's say, rule of design, the e-stop should be mounted somewhere between 600 millimeters and 1.7 meters from the platform or the, let's say, the floor area. So that again, yeah. it's within a sensible reach for the users. So yeah, all these things should be considered when mounting the e-stop on your machine. Yeah, I think that's an, it is an important consideration to, to make is the, first of all, the visibility and the accessibility. Um, one of the things I like to do is when I'm traveling, you know, for example, going through an airport is to see how many emergency stop buttons I can find before I find my plane. And um, there are quite a lot, you know, so they are very, very prominent. You did start to talk about the applications there. You were talking about, you know, robotics and, and the, the safe zone, the entry zone, the exit zone, etc. Mm -hmm. Are there any additional ap applications, you know, which maybe come to mind, which I'm not um, overtly obvious that emergency stops will be used in that kind of situation. Okay. Um, first thing I'd like to say is you, you've got the same habit as me. If I'm walking through any <laughs> environment, I'm looking for the switches, the control, the e-stops. It's uh, a boring pastime that I, I share, having uh, you know, plenty of years worth of experience inside industry. Uh, but to answer your question, um, e-stops are used everywhere. Uh, the purpose of the e-stop is to stop a hazard. So if there's a presence of a hazard, and also take into account the emergency stop should never be the primary um, stopping situation to prevent the hazard. There should be other safety devices deployed, whether that's a light curtain, safety edging, mm. 
uh, safety laser scanners, they should be making the, let's say, the area safe. But in the event that something were to fail or the accident occurs, the emergency shop comes into play. Um, so I think that's, that's the reality. Um, I think one interesting application is for, we talked about robots, but if we take the robot pendant, the controller, where somebody maybe has a tablet or they have a pendant where they're manipulating the uh, e-stop, on the back of that, Pendant will be an, a free position enabling device, let's call it a hold to run switch, but there will also be an emergency stop on the front of that panel. Because there could be a situation that that pendant is disconnected from the safety or from the, from the machine or from the robot, if there was an operator and they, they saw an incident, they may still reach for that emergency stop, even though it's not connected. So one application here is, or uh, one of the, the driven standards is actually when the e-stop is on a pendant or a portable device, then it should be illuminated to show that it's active. Um, and we as IDEC have recently launched color changing e-stops specifically for that purpose, um, whether that's battery operated control systems or wired control systems mm -hmm. on a portable or detachable system, it should be color changing. So when it's not active, it doesn't appear as a red e-stop. So yeah, some interesting applications for this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you're getting there a little bit more about the the kind of the range. Um, so just tell me about the the products that you have for e-stops within within iDeck, and if there are any, like you mentioned, there ones that you want to call out specifically. Mm -hmm, certainly. Um, first thing to say is the iDeck e-stop range is extensive. Uh, we have so many different variations, whether that's contact arrangements, whether it's mounting sizes whether it's colors, whether it's illuminated, whether it's color changing. So in, in short, mounting holes of 16, 22 or 30 millimeters, operator sizes of 30, 40 or 60 millimeters, contact configurations from one normally closed to four normally closed or a combination of normally open, normally closed. Um, I mentioned the color changing. So we have uh, color changing, which is white when there is no power to it or it effectively glows red when it has the 24 volt supply to it. Uh, and we've recently launched that same color changing at uh, a low voltage operation for applications where it's detachable or disconnected mm -hmm. portable and it runs off the battery. So we can drive these color changing LEDs uh, or color changing e-stops, I should say, uh, from a three volt supply within a battery. So plenty of applications, uh, plenty of solutions. And the key one there as well on those kind of portable applications the panel depth behind the panel uh, also is very critical because there isn't very much space. So we have e-stops with low behind panel as low as 12 and a half um, millimeters. So very, very uh, perfect for those confined space applications. Yeah, that, that's interesting to, to hear because yeah, you, you, you do come across that obviously with, within the industry and, and to have that extra uh, depth available is great, but when there is no extra depth there and you've got the low profile behind the panel, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think I mean, the, the final point, Greg, for me is we talk about our X series, XW series, which is 20 mil 22 millimeter mounting, XA series, which is 16 millimeter mounting. And of course, through Design Spark, through our components, a lot of those products are available to the market through yourselves. So uh, yeah, easy reach for the customer. Fantastic. Steve, just before we finish, are there any other things that you would maybe just like to call out, you know, maybe resource information, you know, from, from iDeck specifically, or, or just, you know, a comment to close? Okay, uh, two comments then. Firstly, from a, a resource uh, point of uh, reference point, uh, iDeck issued a white paper to do with emergency stops, their interfacing, uh, the importance of uh, understanding the performance level, uh, the B10D values, uh, it's all, all wrapped up in our white paper. Um, in terms of our products, uh, I, I've got some samples here, but you know, something like this emergency stop, this has up to four contacts in such a low behind profile position. Likewise here, we have also up to four contacts inside this device. Um, and typically with our product 24 volt DC supply going through the contacts, um, the typical electromechanical operations is 250,000. So 
very reliable products, very extensive mm. range. Uh, please come and talk to us. We have uh, we have the answers for the questions the customers will have. Fantastic, Steve. I really do um, appreciate you taking the time to come to Design Spark today and to talk about the the e stop range from from IDEC. Um, there are things in the conversation which are very pertinent, and uh, I hope we can have you on Design Spark again sometime soon. It's been a pleasure, Greg. Thank you very much for inviting me.